Well, Watsy has really done it this time. Somebody opened their acidic slime, their secret layer ooze, and in it, a promo judge foil Gaia's Cradle. This is a joke. It's not even real. But today, we are talking about Market the Gathering, where we're going to get into MTG Finance. We're going over secret layer that includes Walking Dead and a new product that's coming out. We're going to talk about variants and something that I noticed about my collection. Commander Legends leaks have led to certain buyouts of certain types of cards. And finally, one of the singles from Zendikar Rising is making big waves in Eternal formats. The video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. For a limited time only, if you join the Patreon at any level, you will receive a holographic Jake and Joel R. Magic logo sticker. Link in the description below. Oh my gosh, there is so much to sort out. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel R. Magic. Today we've got an episode that's just kind of like packed full of a bunch of stuff that's going on in MTG Finance. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, click like, click subscribe. If you like the video by the end of it, we are trying to push to 10k subs. So if you are a fan of the channel and if you have been putting off subscribing, I do ask that you help us meet our goal by the end of 2020. We're just trying to hit 10k. It's a goal that Joel and I set early in the year. If you're already a fan, check us out on Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel. Any level gets you into the Discord. So very briefly, before we get into the bulk of the video, I do want to say this double master singles and zendikar rising singles double master singles are at their lowest they have bottomed out so if you're sleeping on those the product is pretty much out of sight out of mind so now is the time to be picking up those cards and the same is true for zendikar rising the expeditions are getting low people are already anticipating commander legends we have new secret layer products that are coming out there are people that constantly have their attention on the reserve list zendikar rising singles zendikar is i mean it's in standard but it's pretty much as far as finance goes out of sight out of mind people just aren't really interested in it however later on in the video make sure to stick around until the end because there is one single from Zendikar Rising that is making a huge impact in eternal formats today we're talking about secret layer we're talking about masterpiece variants something that I noticed about my collection we're going to be going over commander legends leaks and the impact that has had on the secondary market there's a lot to get into today so let's go ahead and crack on into this for those who don't know, we are hanging out in MTG Finance today, which is the uh, r slash MTG Finance over on Reddit, which is the subreddit, which consists of 72.5k members uh, and has a lot to do with um, a lot of the buyouts that happen in the secondary market. As you can see, we're talking about Rudy's Endgame here, which is uh, something about alpha investments that will just pop up. I will say this, there's a lot of noise in this subreddit, and so you do have to be careful about what you're interested in, what you're listening to over here, and what I like to do on Market the Gathering is I like to come over here and I like to kind of sort out the noise and give emphasis to the stuff that's worth emphasizing. So first things first, we have this cute little joke here from from somebody uh, I got my ooze secret layer today and got a sick promo clearly they have the guy's cradle uh, sealed promo here or they put their guy's cradle into a sealed package for this joke but if you're still sticking around from the cold open from the video this is a joke this is not real so do not freak out Wizards of the Coast did not print reserve list this is just somebody joking around however we are talking about secret layer today which is why i wanted to open with this joke and just kind of like ease us on into it i know that i have your attention so let's talk about this uh rick is good and it's really funny that i can actually type into here mtg rick Oh, what a world we live in. And buy it now, price plus shipping lowest first. And you can see Rick here is $21 by itself. And essentially, I'm showing you this because each of these cards is holding a premium like this. They're not all as expensive as Rick, and they're not all nearly as good as Rick is. But I will show you the, the sealed price for this product. Here's Secret Layer Sealed Walking Dead is $88.99, and that is up already $38.99 from what this product was originally sold for. Now you do get these five cards, but you also get Negan's weapon, Lucille, which is the bat that he holds. So there are six cards here that you are only able to purchase in this, and if you don't know, one of the decks did uh, 5-0 a legacy 
uh, tournament. It was a humans build that was running Rick, and I believe it was running um, Negan. I know it was running Negan, and I think it was also running Michonne as well. Just know this product is already making waves in the secondary market, and it hasn't even made it into players' hands. But I do want you to know this, and I want you to understand this about this product, is a lot of people bought this with the intention of flipping it. I am certain that there are certain players in the market that bought max of this because people are calling it the new reserve list. It was only printed for a short period of time and now you can't get it again and it's weird because it's a deal with Walking Dead and so it's like revisiting these cards or reprinting these cards. How difficult will that be for Wizards of the Coast? And if they do print copies of them like they did for Godzilla as different versions of the card, we need to make sure that if if they do print under a wizard's IP that it's not like there's a Rick that exists from Secret Layer, but then a card that's independent from it. Those cards need to be the same exact cards. Any card in the future that is printed as Rick's Steadfast Leader, let's say that the, the card that's printed in the future by Magic the Gathering is really good mono white human soldier lord. It needs to be Rick Steadfast Leader, just like they did the Godzilla IP under the name of the card. Uh, it can't be in addition to, because we can't have Rick that exists independently by itself and Mono White Amazing Soldier Lord, because then people are just going to run them together. This product is already making waves in the market, like I said. However, how many of these are just to be flipped? You know, that's yet to be seen. But... This card is already going to be impactful in Commander, the, the power level of Rick's Steadfast leader, leader, and we're not even talking about the other cards, the power level of Rick is very high already. Talking about next, Secret Layer Extra Life, we did a review of this product. If you want to go watch that review, we do a, a breakdown of it. In my opinion, it's definitely worth it. There's some very good cards in it. Half the proceeds go to charity. There is definitely some controversy around the charity right now. People are talking about that as, you know, it's a big write-off for Wizards of the Coast. There are actually people in the MTG Finance subreddit that are saying, well, can I write it off? You know, it's kind of like a damned if I do, damned if I don't thing if you're Wizards of the Coast. You know, you could do great things, uh, you could do bad things. Uh, either way, there's people that are never going to be happy with it. I should say this, all of these articles that I'm talking about, all of these posts are going to be in the description of the video. If you want to go in there and if you want to read more closely people's comments, or if you want to be part of the discussion yourself, you can go there and you can click on these. You can create an account on Reddit if you don't already have one, and you can jump in and talk about it as well. Secret Layer Extra Life brings us some very impactful cards like Teferi's Protection, Amulet of Vigor, Collect Accompanying, Consecrated Sphinx. Uh, two of these cards are actually three of them. Amulet of Vigor is pretty powerful in certain commander builds as well. But Teferi's Protection and Consecrated Sphinx have been staples for a long time and we all know Collect Accompany has made big waves in constructed formats. Secret Layer Extra Life goes on sale beginning 9 a.m. Pacific Time on November 6th through 9 a.m. Pacific Time, November 9th. And again, it will cost $60, one of the more expensive Secret Layers, but again, 50% of the proceeds go to charity that is uh, Children's Hospital of Seattle. Now, moving right along, I noticed something interesting in my collection. I track all of my cards on TCG Player, and I started noticing something with some of my high-end variants, specifically... Mana Vault. We're on uh, eBay here, and this is Mana Vault Masterpiece, price plus shipping, lowest first. And I did notice a bit of a spike on this card. I acquired, I opened one of these, and then I actually acquired, we'll go ahead and zoom in there a little bit, but I acquired two more at 150 each, and I did notice, and you'll see the price is a little bit more on the screenshot that I'm sharing, I did notice that a lot of the Masterpiece variants have started to go through a spike, and I'm not going to get into all of them, but I will say the ones that are EDH relevant Masterpieces, which kind of speaks to the question, which is, which variants are worth investing in. And I do think it does come down to the Battle for Zendikar Expeditions, the masterpieces from Kaladesh, the invocations from Amonkhet, and Hour of Devastation, just because the variants that we're getting now are printed so much more frequently. They just appear at such a higher rate. When you're thinking about a booster box of Battle for Zendikar, which when that originally came out was around 100 bucks, a booster box of that was not guaranteed to have an expedition in it, like the booster box of Zendikar Rising is. 
or the set booster box or the collector booster box, which has two. And then you're likely to get two to three and in bad boxes, one in a collector booster box. Here's a Zendikar Rising collector booster box. Price plus shipping lowest first. Let's find one by a reputable seller. Here we go. $214. Buy it now. Price plus shipping. Okay, so in this factory sealed booster box, you're going to be getting two guaranteed non-foil expeditions. Okay, you're going to be getting one to three expedition foils in the packs that you open in this box. One, if the box is bad, three, if the box is great. I don't know if anybody hit four, but four, if it was just absolutely amazing. So say you hit middle of the road, you hit two expeditions in your packs. You get the two expeditions that are in uh, non-foil that are just included simply by buying the box. So you're getting four expeditions for $214. Now, if somebody said to me when I was buying a ton of Battle for Zendikar, if someone had said, well, Jake, if you buy two boxes of Battle for Zendikar, you're gonna get four expeditions. I would have said, what, bullshit. No, that's not how that works. Because if I recall correctly, and please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, I remember the expeditions from Battle for Zendikar being roughly one to two per case. And a case of Battle for Zendikar would have been six booster boxes. So it's a very, very different product. I opened tons of packs of Battle for Zendikar and came up short. It was very, very, very rare to get a pack of Battle for Zendikar that had an expedition in it. And when it happened, it was very magical. That feeling is not there with this product. You know that you're getting them. It's still cool to pull a foil expedition land. It's still cool to pull a foil Misty Rainforest or a foil, a foil Scalding Tarn or Foil Cavern of Souls. It's just a different kind of cool and it's a much more laid back, tame, like reined in kind of cool, which is why I think we're starting to see an uptick in these masterpiece variants, especially the EDH related ones that are actually good. There's a reason why the cheapest Soul Ring masterpiece on eBay is $595. It's just extremely, extremely rare, and this is an EDH staple. I'm not surprised that there's emphasis on these kind of cards. Uh, if people aren't buying reserve list, I see them moving more toward this kind of thing. So when I got this information, naturally I went over to Reddit. I was like, is anybody else noticing this? But uh, we do have one person, Crucible of Worlds, quietly climbing. This is where I was like, wait a minute, what? In under a year, Masterpiece Crucible goes from 98.17, and I know because I have a Masterpiece Crucible. And I was like, wait a minute, I remember buying that for 80, and I remember it just kind of like hovering around 100. I was like, yeah, you know, that's fine, whatever. But I did look it up, and as of October 2020, it is hovering around $200, which just leads me to believe that people are starting to target the masterpieces, the expeditions that are actually rare. When I say starting to, I mean there has been a shift back in direction to those. Whereas people have had emphasis on those in the past, there's more emphasis on it now as we have more and more and more and more variants. Uh, people are like, wait a minute, what variants are actually rare. What are the ones that are actually worth investing in? Now, if Wizards of the Coast were to do some sort of set booster thing and just reprint all of the, the expeditions from Battle for Zendikar, all of the masterpieces from Kaladesh, the invocations from Amonkhet, I, I think it would it would be in really poor taste. And I just, I don't think there's any way that they can do that with any kind of grace. Maybe like a FTV from the vault expeditions and then they just bring them all out and they're in like a, a worse foiling than the foiling that was originally available. I, I don't know. I just don't see it working well. So let's go ahead and talk about Commander Legends since that's on the agenda here. Uh, there have been Commander Legends leaks, a lot of them. We're not going to cover any of the leaks here. We have covered a couple of the leak videos where we talk about some of the um, interesting reprints that are popping up in Commander Legends. I'll go ahead and link a couple of those videos now if you want to check those out. But essentially it came down to this, and if you've been living under a rock, the person who was leaking all of these cards, it appears that the cards were stolen. Well guys, looks like our worst fears have come to pass. Turns out the original eBay listing, and this is somebody from MTG Finance, bought the eBay listing so they could crack open the packs and spoil the cards. The listing was stolen. 
Turns out the original eBay listing I bought was stolen, so I had to end up giving the packs back to the original company. They also wanted me to take down the posts, and while that can't stop the images from circulating, I still I still went through with that as a gesture of goodwill. Just saying, it really sucks that all of these leaks happened, but this does become information. So if you want to check out those videos, if you want to scour uh, MTG Finance and find these posts, you can find them. This reads like Watsy sent lawyers after me. Oh, Watsy absolutely sent their entire legal team after this guy. Well, guys, looks like our worst fears have come. Okay, so anyway, because of these leaks, it has done what many sets do, and it has sent a reverberation across the finance world. And what's going on right now are the pirate lords are on the move. This is definitely in response to the fact that there are new pirate cards that are coming out in commander legends uh there's actually and again i do encourage you to go in here and, and read about this i'm not going to go into all of it and what cards are spiking and because of what cards so the next part of this video i do want you to know that there's going to be a, a spoiler on this page so if you want to skip the glinthorn buccaneer segment that i'm about to talk about glinthorn buccaneer is a card that was printed in core 2020 uh it has like a couple infinite combo possibilities and one of which is caused by a card in Commander Legends. We're going to briefly talk about uh, that card and and just the fact that Glinthorn is spiking because of it. Again, if you if you want to skip this section, you can just kind of like end the video now. We have one more thing to talk about from Zendikar Rising as well that is going to be interesting, but you've made it pretty much through the bulk of the video. However, we are going to talk about this right now, which is Glinthorn Buccaneer is going to explode in price. And um, when the Commander Legends leaks originally dropped, we were hit with this is the card Malcolm Keenight Navigator, legendary cre creature Siren Pirate flying when one or more pirates you control deals combat damage to your opponents create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage this way and it has partner it's a 2-2 the important part is this when one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents damage not combat damage this essentially confirms that malcolm triggers off of any source of damage which is huge ramifications for the pirates deck in the case of glinthor buccaneer it becomes a straight two card infinite damage combo as long as you have two plus opponents and a reshuffler in your deck. Think Kozlik, Butcher of Truth, and something like Lightning Rig Crew becomes an absolutely insane mana plus damage engine. It's not an actual infinite combo because you're gated by health totals, but between cards like Curiosity and Thassa's Oracle, winning will be trivial once you've assembled your engine. Lightning Rig Crew has unfortunately already been leaked, so it's a completely dead spec, even foils, but Buccaneer should be pretty safe. We already know that EDH precons are uh, red-white equipment and blue green landfall and since wizards won't include an infinite combo and limited we should be in the clear the final nail in the coffin for me i don't see a world where this isn't the optimal way to build the pirate edh and cedh decks so i really like these cards in addition to my previous callouts of corsair captain and admiral beckett brass that i mentioned here other strong contenders are things like foil curiosity and other similar effects dockside extortionist timestream navigator and rebel and riches which should all be getting some heavy love in this archetype personally i've only snagged time stream navigator single print mythic and anyway so i know it kind of sucks having to like uh deal with leaks and stuff but you know I'll, I'll just show you right now what has happened on ebay uh with glinthorn let's just look at completed here and we'll go ended recently so glinthorn buccaneer has already started spiking like this is just all in the last couple days Lots of people buying it. Pre-release foil, $6. The card had already had a little bit of EDH attention, but now you just see play sets are, are getting sold out. We have foils here in, in September. Uh, promos that were selling for as low as $3. Anyway, just something to keep in mind. Looking at Glinthorn here, we're not going to start to see a big shift yet in the foil price as all of this is pretty new information, but I would expect in the next couple days and once this um, updates for us to start to see some difference in this card's price. Again, most likely the foil variant is going to be uh, affected the most by EDH demand, but if you are just the kind of person who wants to go ahead and get in early and buy a non-foil copy of this card just in case it does, 
pop off the way people are expecting, I would suggest doing that. It's still a very cheap card in non-foil. Finally, let's talk about this big card in Zendikar Rising that has been making waves. It is Skyclave Apparition, and wow, what a card it actually is. And you can already see with this card, like, look at this. This is the cheapest price on eBay. And I mean, I know it's a very, very strong card. Two white, one other. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non-land, non-token permanent you don't control with convert a mana cost four or less. When it leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card. If this card in EDH takes something like, I don't know, a soul ring, a mana crypt, the illusion that they get is nothing. The Skyclave Apparition is excellent as well in any kind of like flicker type effect. For a Zendikar Rising single, rare to be as high as eight dollars i think it might just be a lot of hype right now however the card is making big waves in eternal formats as well like modern and legacy you should know about those formats that they value very low cmc so when apparition is exiling pretty much anything that you put on the board that is nothing to shake a stick at and what is left behind when it leaves the battlefield is oftentimes going to be very easy to deal with it's also important to note that this card as someone knows notes in this uh, in the thread can be viled which is why uh, people are now playing it over council's judgment so this card is very 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 strong and i think at first glance we just kind of like shrug at it but it's strong in modern it's strong in legacy and then the other appeal is that in cedh everything is also very low to the ground as well so it's going to have an impact in that the thing that's going to hold this card back is the fact that it is two white and one other we do know that historically in edh white is going to be weaker and the fact that it is double white makes it pretty restrictive as far as you know how often early on are you going to have double white available in a deck that is three color so this card most likely is easily going to be played in mono color but is going to thrive the most in a two color edh deck especially early on i'm not saying that you can't get double white early on in a game of edh but when you're prioritizing getting all of your colors online in a three color deck or a four color deck the card does become pretty restrictive it is a card that you need to have on your radar if it isn't already as it does look like it's going to be a multi-form Matt Staple. All right, guys, we've talked about a lot today. We've talked about Secret Layer. We've talked about variants. We've talked about Zendikar Rising singles that have made an impact. What did I miss? I want to hear about that in the comments. It's always a pleasure to make these Market the Gathering videos. I like keeping up with this kind of stuff, and there is no shortage of things that we need to report on. We have more to cover. Again, if you like these videos, click like, click subscribe. It's the best way to support the channel as we push for 10k. Until next time, I'm Jake with Jake and Jeweler Magic. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm tapped out.